Kings Mercs. Thanks for all the great feedback on the Mask Rhino video that I just put up. Lots of views, lots of comments for that one. And this video is probably not going to get a lot of views and a lot of comments, but uh, it's for a book series that I absolutely love. It's for the Sobs, the Soldiers of Barabbas. And I was reading this one at the beginning of that Rhino video. So uh, I did start a Facebook group a while ago for Sobs, and you can find it by searching Sobs by Jack Hild. And it's, uh, it's slowly growing, and it's great to interact with other Sobs fans. This is uh, another obscure book series from the 80s, and I just love obscure things. I love Transformers, G.I. Joe, A-Team, Knight Rider, all of the big hits, but I also love the little obscure things because the magic of the 80s seeped into everything, not just the big hits. It seeped into the other stuff that wasn't as commercially successful. So uh, I'm really enjoying these Sobs books, and uh, today's review is for book number seven called River of Flesh. This one came out in July of 1985, and one of the inside uh, pages before the prologue says, special thanks and acknowledgement to Robin Hardy for his contribution to this work. So Robin Hardy was the author of the Sobs book a couple back that I loathed. I, it took forever for me to finish it, uh, just because he had those really short sentences. And I was hoping that he had gotten better by this point, and he either did or he had a lot of help, because this one is a lot better. Just the writing on it is much stronger, and it, it felt more like the Alan Phillipson books. It felt more like real people with real thoughts, real feelings. We get to go into the, the heads of these mercs, and they're not just meatheads. They are actual really interesting characters, and it's not just about Niall Barabbas himself. Now, he is my favorite character, and I think he is the most interesting, compelling character in these books. But the reason I think these work so well is because his team is great, too. It's not like he's just being followed by a bunch of, you know, blank, jarhead robots. So I'm very happy to say that Robin Hardy's writing is much stronger this time out. He has learned to use commas, let his sentences go a little bit longer. Uh, my biggest uh, critique, complaint, uh, pet peeve about this book though is um, even though it's immersive a lot of it is very immersive and this book and most of the Sobs books that I've read so far are way better than they had any right to be uh, I think these were conceived like the Mac Bowen books to just be churned out quickly and I guess the Harlequin romance novels any any pulp fiction type of book that was supposed to be just churned out every month or every couple months and the publishers maybe didn't really expect a very high quality when you're producing something at that rapid a rate. But I think the guys behind Sobs um, took this book series and they said, yeah, this could be trash, uh, male adventure trash, but we can do something so much more with it. And instead, they went in the direction that David Morrell did with First Blood. Uh, instead of just blam, blam, um, action and killing and gore and violence uh, they decided to go let's get in the mind of a soldier let's see what motivates a mercenary especially one that feels as though he's a man without a country anymore and i do appreciate that more realistic approach to these books so as with most sobs books it starts with introducing the new villain of the book which the sobs will be going up against in this book uh, this time out it's general khan from cambodia but instead of just some new guy that they have to face. I like that they tied this back in with a flashback to Vietnam. Brabus has dealt with this guy before, so right away there's more weight to it. He's not just the next pain in the butt. Uh, there is a history there. He's also held on to some POWs from the Vietnam War for a very long time. So uh, I've said that these books are a lot like Rambo. Uh, I describe them as uh, two-thirds Rambo, one-third A-Team. And so this is especially Rambo, like Rambo 2, uh, First Blood Part 2 Rambo, because um, even though the Sobs are hired to go in in a information gathering mission, they're not hired to go in there and rescue POWs. They're not hired to go in there and kill anybody. I really like that this mission was an information gathering mission. So that was a nice change from, you gotta go in and blow everything up, guys. Uh, even though that was their mission, Obviously, they're going to try to save these POWs when they find out that they're being held. So General Khan isn't just an evil military guy. Uh, he actually 
was created in part by the United States of America uh, due to the dropping of Agent Orange. And, and this is a book that isn't so much black and white, straight up good guys versus bad guys, good Americans or good mercenaries uh, versus, you know, the evil foreigners. This one has a little bit more gray in it because they do bring up the fact that Agent Orange was dumped during the Vietnam War on everybody. Yes, there was an intended target, but the American soldiers got dumped on as well, and they suffer the consequences of that decision as well in this book. So I like that it was a little bit more gray this time out. And even though the villain is an absolute piece of garbage in that opening torture scene, it is something else, man. Like I've, I've read and I've seen a lot of things in movies of villainous people doing horrible things in order to establish them as being evil and you really want to hate them. But this is like, this takes it to a new level, man. This guy is pure, pure evil. So again, it grips you. It's something out of the ordinary. It's not your typical uh, Pulp Fiction trash novel. It is really imaginative in a very twisted, uh, twisted way. So if you like those really uh, gory horror movies, then there's there's some really maniacal stuff in here for you. I also like that halfway through this book, they actually take the time to take a breather right before uh, the mission is really about to begin. And it's not just gearing up, as most movies do or some books, of the physical gearing up of putting on the vest, putting on the web belt and the, and the knife and the guns and the clips. Yeah, that's important, but... I like what they did in this book, the uh, the mental gearing up, where the author actually, he takes you through the Sob's minds, and we get to hear inner monologues, and that is what makes you connect with a character. That's what makes them important to you. That's what makes you care about them, uh, being able to read their thoughts. That's one of the huge advantages that books have over movies and TV shows, that, yeah, I guess there can be narration in a movie or a TV show. And that works to some extent, but uh, this is really where the potential is maximized. So it's cool. Even seven books in, being able to go through a sob's mind and learn more about them. And if you're as sick as I am of forced diversity in TV shows and movies uh, these days with all the social justice stuff, then this might be a uh, breath of fresh air as well because um, I'm always saying it's been done before. Uh, the strong female character has been achieved without making all of the males around her look like bumbling idiots. Well, this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say it's been done and it's been done well before. Uh, this book does a fantastic job of establishing a strong female character. It's the doctor on the team, Dr. Leona Hatton, and she is a sob. She is a soldier of Barabbas. She is strong, intelligent, but she's also cracked, so she's not what... They call her Mary Sue or Gary Stu, where she's invincible, nothing can touch her, she's bulletproof. Uh, she's still dealing with her father's, uh, I won't spoil it, but uh, physical ailments. Uh, she's dealing with that stuff, and so she has a struggle to overcome, but it doesn't cripple her. Uh, in a way, it strengthens her. And the team has great racial diversity too, but I'm not going to go down a list and say there's one of these, and there's one of these. Because these characters, to me, aren't the color of their skin, and they're not their culture. When I think of Claude Hayes, I think of the strong, silent uh, sob who you can count on. He's, he's Mr. Steady in a firefight. He'll get the job done. I don't think of him by the color of his skin. And when I think of Billy, too, I don't think of him by his native heritage at all, because it's not his character. It doesn't matter. Just like in real life, when I think of my friends, people I know, I don't think of them as the color of their skin. I think of them as their accomplishments. I don't think of them as their racial background or their ethnic background. I think of them as their choices and, uh, and what they say and what they do. So the diversity is in here and I couldn't care less about it because to me it's more important who they are and what they do than their heritage their ancestry. If you're a gun enthusiast and there's all sorts of great technical info about the guns here, they don't just say so-and-so picked up his gun and put in the clip. They describe, like, I don't know anything about guns, but all of the uh, accurate info is in there. Um, 
all of the ammo information, the mechanisms, the name of the gun. So if you really like that stuff, authentic attention to detail. These people either really knew what they were talking about or they had some sort of uh, easily accessible gun encyclopedia or uh, gun experts uh, to talk to about and get advice with. Um, but there's also a psychological aspect of warfare. So again, that, that makes this a little bit more immersive and feel a little bit more realistic than most pulpy army stories. There's a great passage here from page 130. Brabus looked at his pilot. It was obvious from the tone of his voice that the two men weren't getting along. It was natural on a mission, or over a number of missions, for tensions to arise between men. But it was also dangerous, because such emotions clouded the reflex response to danger. So I like that Brabus looks at it from an analytical perspective. He's not like the father saying, Shut up, you two! Get along! He's looking at it like... I always go back to Spock from the original Star Trek series. Uh, you know, going, Hmm, how is this going to affect us when it counts? And uh, he deals with it accordingly. One of the other things that makes this so immersive is that he incorporates a sense of smell into things. So it's not just describing what everybody's seeing or hearing. He's telling you what they smell, which I think is rare uh, in writing. So when they're gearing up for their mission, uh, there's a warning of don't wear any aftershave because the enemy will smell you uh, if they're downwind. And then there's also... Uh, part where Brabus can smell a dying fire and he knows that there are soldiers nearby just because he could smell their fire. So I mentioned the grayness of the villain General Khan earlier on and what adds to it is that his he has a daughter, uh, a very small daughter, and she has a birth defect as well from Agent Orange. And she's not written in a way that you feel sorry for her and General Khan is, is motivated by revenge because of the love of his daughter. Uh, she's really nasty too. She might even be nastier than her daddy. Uh, she gleefully uh, orders people to their death and she's a child. She doesn't know what she's doing, but the way she's written, there really isn't much sympathy for her, even though she is a victim uh, of the Agent Orange. But uh, General Khan creates this entire village of people so that his daughter will feel comfortable around people with birth defects like her so it's a very interesting situation again it's not just a madman saying i'm going to have revenge on the world for what was done to me and to my daughter it's sad you know it, he he's evil you hate him you can't stand what he's doing to people but there is also an aspect of pity which i think is rare with villains in these types of stories one more new character is introduced which is captain scott who is one of the pow's who's been kept for a very long time by General Khan, and he had actually met Niall Barabbas back in Vietnam, but he is uh, very similar to Niall Barabbas. Uh, it, it's hard to establish these new characters, these non-villain new characters, and connect with them, but uh, it's pretty quick, at least with me, with uh, Captain Scott, because he has that same sort of zen-like quality to him that Niall Barabbas has. He is uh, not a uh, raging brute. He's very analytical. He's very Vulcan-like. Uh, he can get worked up. But uh, I just appreciate... I love the Barabbas character, so if you give me another one that's very similar to him, especially a guy who's been through hell, so much worse hell than Barabbas ever had to go through, uh, that's compelling writing again. So like the other Sobs books, it is very patient with its build. It's another... I call it a slow burn. Some people might think it's boring and they want the action all the time. Uh, there is a little bit here and there, but for the most part, it felt like, once again, it wasn't until almost being done. Uh, this is a 220-page book, 222, something like that. And I remember getting to page 200 and feeling like, we're not even close to being done yet. Uh, and I thought, is this going to lead directly into the next book? Because usually they, uh, they start the situation and they end it. It's a one and done, pretty much. Minimal continuity from one book to the next. A couple mentions here and there, which I appreciate. But for the most part, they're self-contained stories. And uh, near the end of the book, with very few pages left, I thought, there's no way they can wrap this up. Like the, This has to be leading right into the next book. We're going to finally get a continuation story, like a two-parter or something like that. But nope, they, they wrap it up. Uh, nice and quick. It didn't feel rushed though. Uh, good ending. So as much as I like this book, it still had a few of those writing problems that Show No Mercy had. 
Uh, just to give you a couple examples from page 155. The Kemmer soldiers who had stepped forward to check out the approaching vehicle had a big surprise. They died. And then later on in the same page, two soldiers bursting through a doorway on one side caught slugs in the chest and slammed back the way they came. Dead. And in a book that can be so immersive with the smells descriptions and with the monologues, interior monologues, and the psychology of battle, that is out of place. That feels like pulp fiction no, uh, male action novella trash novel writing where dead and, and lead far too much use of lead and that doesn't work because the torture stuff and the executions and, and other stuff is so serious uh, it just feels like using that cutesy language uh, it is sort of glamorizing the violence when nothing else in the book is trying to glamorize the violence it's trying to be realistic and gritty uh, with a little bit of fun and entertainment uh, dispersed throughout. But f when the actual shooting is happening, that should be written like the rest of the book, I thought. That uh, the description should be analytical, psychological, and instead it's trying to just be pulp. It just it doesn't work, and I would prefer to have uh, accurate descriptions of what's happening instead of having these little colorful John McClane style. It's like John McClane wrote the action scenes uh, or, or something like that. Another example on page 188, the enemy soldier raised a submachine gun. He was dead serious. Bam. Now he was seriously dead. It just feels off. It feels fun or funny uh, or, or trying to be witty. And that's not uh, in keeping with the rest of the book. Uh, if you want to break it down, a guy just got killed. A guy just lost his life. Don't be cute about it. Don't make a joke about it. Um, you know, the Sobs joke and stuff before the mission. And they might have a little bit of banter during the mission. But for the most part, during the mission, they're all business. So it doesn't feel right that during the mission, when they're usually all business, the writing all of a sudden gets jokey. Another positive, though, is the realism in terms of the physicality aspect. Captain Scott at one point is on the move. He's the POW, and he is in horrible physical shape. You can just imagine what being a POW who's been tortured for decades uh, would feel like, and these defects from Agent Orange, and being dehydrated and malnourished. But he's not a Superman, and the author actually gives him time to recuperate, which I thought was fantastic. Because as I'm reading it, I'm thinking, there's no way. This guy, adrenaline will only carry you so far until you just crash. And so how is this possible? And as, as I just started to wonder that, uh, he got some nourishment, and they took a break. He, they gave him a nap. They took a couple hours of a break so that he could be... A little bit replenished and even after that break he's still not superman he's still not doing things he uh pow in his physical state shouldn't be able to do and for the very end of the book i think it was cool that barabbas himself was not the guy to dispense justice uh, again i don't want to spoil anything for people who are going to get interested in in buying these reading them uh, but I thought it was cool because Barabbas, he's the main guy and he's usually the guy who gets the final bang or the uh, And I thought it was cool that they gave that to somebody else on the team this time. And it was a guy I thought that needed it. Um, it's the new pilot. There was another pilot who perished in the previous book. So this new pilot, he needs to do something. You can't just say you're a new sob and now you matter because you're a new sob. Uh, the the accomplishments are, are what's important and so uh, it meant a lot in order to take this new character and give him this mantle uh this badge saying he's the one that was directly responsible for taking this guy out of the equation and a great speech by captain scott at the end again touching on the grayness of the situation and having a heck of a lot more accountability in his situation than most people would have uh, taking responsibility for something he didn't even do. He didn't even order Agent Orange drops, but he was taking responsibility for his country and saying, 
my country did this and uh, I'm somewhat responsible for it. So uh, I also uh, liked his decision at the end of the book as well. So that's Sobs, book number seven, River of Flesh. Another fine addition to the series. And looking forward to reading the next one, Sobs number eight, Eye of the Fire. If you're a fan of Sobs from back in the day, or even if you've never heard of them, but you like Rambo and the A-Team, and you want more of that 80s authentic men's adventure, mercenary army type of stuff, then uh, check out the Facebook group for Sobs by Jack Hild. Send a request and uh, I'll add you on there. And also if you want to pick up some of these books, uh, you're going to have to do it the old school method. There are no ebook versions of this. There are no audiobooks on audible.com. You got to do it the old fashioned way and actually get the book and sit down and read it, which I'm really enjoying doing. Usually in the morning, I'll hop on the incumbent bike, uh, have a seat and just read a chapter or two of this. It's a really great way to start the day. No screens, no cell phones, no radio, news blaring, telling you how the world is falling apart. Just peace and quiet and the, the words on the page. So if you want to pick up some of these, I would recommend going to abebooks.com. Tons of used Sobs books on there. A lot of them still in great condition. Just do a search for Sobs and the author is Jack Hild. Regardless of who actually wrote it, the author is always going to be listed as Jack Hild. And a lot of the books on there are really cheap with really cheap shipping too. So you can get a whole bunch of these for next to nothing. And uh, they're good. They're really good if you're into this style of, uh, of books. Thanks for watching and until next time.